Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, a little bit of, of a break uh, in terms of the draft reviews to a certain extent. Uh, we're going to look at the Oakland Raiders draft day trades. Uh, so we're going to look at the trade that sent Martavis Bryant um, from the Pittsburgh Steelers to the Oakland Raiders. And we're also going to look at the Jihad Ward uh, for Ryan Switzer trade as well. Uh, to kind of see what those trades can look like on paper based on data and based on analytics. Uh, so we're going to look at production data, athleticism data, and some NFL data as well uh, to get sort of a picture in terms of uh, those particular trades. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. And with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to one of the first kind of big trades uh, that the Raiders did, which was to acquire Martavis Bryant from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, they gave up a uh, you know a third round pick for the selection, which I felt was a little high. Uh, but let me get into why uh, that is. Um, first off, when you look at Martavis Bryant's production data coming out of Clemson, he had a 44.53 passing yards mark share production score, uh, which doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter threshold. And so far in Martavis Bryant's career, he has not yet hit 64 starts in his career. Um, so, which further shows some of the concern <laughs> that you might have. Um, again, not that great production coming out uh, of, uh, of Clemson. And when you look at the averages at the position, the average All-Pro score, average Pro Bowl score, and average starter score, well below what those averages are. Um, so again, when it comes to Martavis Bryant, he's just someone who, when it comes to, uh, to production data at Clemson, he just was never the guy. He was more so a number three wide receiver, a complimentary wide receiver in many respects, um, but was never a guy that was the main cog of the passing offense. Uh, has some good athleticism traits, you know, 85.28 in terms of explosiveness, 88.01 in terms of speed, and 62.36 in terms of flexibility testing. Um, so he is someone who does have some impressive explosion and speed traits um, in many ways. Uh, you know, he's, he's kind of like a Randy Moss-like athlete, uh, which is why some people call him Moss Tavis Bryan and stuff like that. But the difference between the two is Randy Moss is a guy who, during his rookie season, um, was setting records and Martavis Bryant was not setting records um, and Randy Moss was doing it at a much younger age as well um, so again I don't think that the Randy Moss comparison is apt when you look at the fact that you have one guy in Randy Moss who is making a legacy for himself in his first couple years of his career whereas Martavis Bryant has been stopping and going and stopping and going and stopping and going um, and when you look at his NFL data uh, so again, this is basically his market share production at the NFL level, uh, total offensive market share, and he's never had an 80 to 90 plus percentile production season in terms of total offensive or total passing yardage market share production, which underscores my issue with him, which is that he's just never really been a elite productive or even starting productive wide receiver in his entire career up to this point. Uh, and not only that, he hasn't been the most efficient wide receiver either. Um, this is first down conversion rate data. This basically deals with a wide receiver's ability to convert first downs into first down, um, second downs into first down, or third downs into first down. And um, when you look at Martavis Bryant from 2017, 2015, and 2014, he's never been consistent um, across the board in terms of his ability to convert passes into first downs on first down, second down, or third down in his entire career. And this is based on um, over 500 wide receiver performances since the 2001, uh, 2011, excuse me, uh, uh, NFL season. Um, so Bryant is just not very efficient. He's not productive, uh, and he has tons of off-the-field stuff, which I won't get too much into. But the bottom line is, is when it comes to him coming out of college at Clemson, he looked like a guy that wasn't going to become a long-term starter or a significant impact player in the NFL. He has good athleticism traits, which is something that people keep coming back to and keep wishing that, well, if only he got his head on straight, if only he improved, if only he did this, when I think the writing's on the wall. Um, this is a guy that just, quite frankly, is not going to become a long-term starter consistently in his career. He is someone that could have one year here and there where he becomes like a one-year wonder, like a Terrell Pryor-like player who has one year where he has a thousand plus yards, but it isn't very efficient. But uh, the bottom line is I just don't like this trade at all because um, you gave up a third-round pick in a class that, that wasn't really deep at wide receiver but definitely had some pretty intriguing wide receiver prospects. Um, so 
I'm just not that big on this trade. Uh, I think Martavis Bryant is someone who has shown his true colors again and again. And uh, ultimately, I don't think this is a bet that's really going to pay off at this point in his career. Then, of course, we get to the Jihad Ward trade. Uh, looking at Jihad Ward coming out of college, uh, very poor production trade, 66.67 in terms of solo tackle data, 28.22 in terms of sack data, and 34.12 in terms of tackle loss data. Did not have all pro approval potential based on his production data. Didn't have all pro approval potential either in terms of his athleticism traits, only 34.86 in terms of explosiveness, 28.36 in terms of speed, and 54.32 in terms of flexibility. More so had starter potential than all pro approval potential based on his athleticism traits. Uh, and when you look at the average all pro and average pro bowl athleticism trade data, it's, it's just not even, there's no discussion here. Um, so again, not that great in terms of his overall athleticism traits. His NFL production has been eerily similar to his college production uh, in 2016, pretty decent solo tackle data, uh, iffy sack data, iffy pass deflection data, total impact below average. Uh, his 2017 was cut short um, because of uh, various sort of ailments and stuff like that, so that's kind of thrown out the you know the window. But um, bottom line is, Jihad Ward is not someone that has a good chance to become a long-term starter does, and doesn't really have a good shot to become a high-impact player either. And the Raiders got rid of him. Uh, what did they get rid of him for? Uh, Ryan Switzer, uh, the wide receiver out of North Carolina, who has his own sort of issues in a certain way. Um, his production data, he only had a 64.56 passing yards mark share production score coming out of North Carolina. Um, he did not hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, or three-time Pro Bowl production um, area in terms of his uh, data so it's very unlikely that he becomes a high quality NFL wide receiver um, and this is based on every wide receiver performance since 1969 but he did hit at least above the long-term starter threshold but the average long-term starter score is 81.45 and he definitely is below what that average is which again is the only sort of big question mark when it comes to Ryan Switzer is you know how good is he ultimately going to become in terms of all pro potential, pro bowl potential, very unlikely, but starter potential is definitely there when you look at his overall profile. When you look at his athleticism traits, he does have at least one all pro says pro bowl potential athleticism trait in terms of flexibility, 80.64 in terms of flexibility testing here. Um, so he does have some high quality, uh, you know, athleticism traits. This is more so like a high end slot receiver in many ways in terms of his traits, but again, his production data is just not that impressive. Um, so all I can really say about this particular trade is that Ryan Switzer does have more potential to become a high quality slot receiver at the NFL level than Giad Ward has of becoming a, a you know, long-term starting edge rusher or whatever they want to turn him into. But this kind of was like a swap for two players that have been kind of disappointing uh, in many ways. And the data kind of explains some of that disappointment. Overall, though, looking at both of these particular trades, I really do not like the Martavis Bryant trade. I think you gave up way too much for a wide receiver that has shown you his true colors again and again from the college level to the NFL level. It just has not worked out. Um, so, you know, again, could he have like one season here and there where he does some interesting things and then gets a payday? Sure. But I think it's very unlikely that he becomes a high quality NFL wide receiver consistently in his career because of his past problems. Um, Jihad Ward, on the other hand, I do think is a uh, Jihad Ward for Ryan Switzer, I do believe is a decent trade. Um, you end up getting a, a wide receiver that could become a long term starter um, in Ryan Switzer. He does have more potential to become a long term starter than Jihad Ward has of becoming a long term starter. So I think the, the, uh, the Raiders kind of won in that particular trade. Uh, but both these trades really won't have a huge impact. Um, for the Raiders, in, in, in my personal opinion. Um, I think even if Ryan Switzer becomes a long-term starter, I do think that, you know, that's decent. But I, I don't think any of these players I mentioned, Bryant, Ward, or Switzer, have potential to become multiple all-pro, multiple Pro Bowl type wide receiver types. So ultimately, uh, we'll see what happens, of course. But I just think that that's kind of the bottom line when it comes to these particular players. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gymmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded 
when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.